Hello and welcome to another Mr. Carter Science Special. In this video, we'll be looking at how to help the heart. By the end of the video, you'll be able to explain how the heart keeps its natural rhythm and you can explain how pacemakers work and what artificial hearts do. Apart from heart disease and heart attacks, the heart can have many other problems, including leaky valves. The heart contains two different sets of valves, the atrioventricular valves that separate the atrium from the ventricles, and you can see those here. There's the atrium, there's the ventricle, there's the left atrium and ventricle, and there are the valves in between, the AV valves. And we also have the semilunar valves that separate the ventricles from the start of the arteries. So here are the arteries here flowing up, and there's the aorta flowing up and behind. And here are the semilunar valves separating the ventricles from the beginning of those arteries. When closed, those valves must withstand really high blood pressure created by the contracting heart muscle. Over time, though, valves may become stiff and not fully open, or in fact not fully closed, so the valves may leak. The heart will become less efficient, so the blood is not transported as well as it should be. Less oxygen will reach the body cells, there will be less respiration taking place, less energy is released, and a person may become breathless and tired. Without treatment, a person will eventually die. There are two main forms of treatment for leaky valves. Doctors can operate and replace the faulty heart valves, and those replacement valves can either be artificial or biological. So patients often have to have a discussion with a doctor over which choice is right for them. Artificial valves are made of titanium or polymers and there is no risk of rejection with artificial valves, so there's no need for the patients to take immunosuppressant drugs. These valves do not wear out and so are very long lasting, so there's no need for regular surgery at hospitals. There's no ethical considerations when you use artificial materials, unlike using bi um, biological valves. There's also no risk of transferring pathogens that might transmit diseases with artificial valves. However, artificial valves can cause blood clots and increase the risk of heart attacks and strokes. So a patient who's had their valves replaced must take medicines to prevent their blood from clotting. They must take this medicine for the rest of their lives. Some patients with artificial valves also complain that they can hear them, but the movement of those valves is louder than they are used to. So what about biological valves? Well, biological valves are taken from donor animals, such as pigs and cattle and even human donors, and they work extremely well. The valves do not cause blood clots, so patients do not need to take anti-clotting medicine. There's less risk of strokes and heart attacks because there's, they don't cause blood clots. However, the valves will need replacing regularly as they only last for a short time, usually between 12 and 15 years, but it can be as low as five years. There's also ethical issues in using animal tissue in medicine. Using biological valves also carry the risk of rejection, so immunosuppressant drugs must be taken for the rest of the patient's life. There's also a risk of transferring pathogens and transmitting diseases from the donor tissue. So a patient and you in your exams must will be expected to be able to weigh up the pros and cons, the advantages and disadvantages of both treatments for utilising artificial and biological valves in um, a valve replacement um, surgery. But there are other heart problems you need to be aware of. For example, heart problems with the pacemaker. So what is the pacemaker? Well, the intrinsic rhythm of the heartbeat is maintained by a wave of electrical excitations very similar to a nerve impulse. And this impulse is created by a group of cells in the right atrium called the sino, sino atrial node. And this area is known as the natural pacemaker. It's here on the diagram. The impulse created by the natural pacemaker causes the atrium to contract. Then there's a short delay before the impulse is sent to the very base of the ventricles. 
so that they will contract as well, causing the blood to be squeezed and sent up and out of the arteries. If the natural pacemaker stops working properly, this can cause serious problems. If the heart beats too slowly, the affected person's cells will not get enough oxygen to respire. If the heart beats too fast, blood is not pumped properly and again the body's cells will not receive enough oxygen. So what is the solution? Well, the problems with the rhythm of the heart can be solved using an artificial pacemaker. This is an electrical device which is implanted into your chest to correct irregularities in the heart rate. Artificial pacemakers only weigh between 20 and 50 grams and they're attached to your heart by two wires. The artificial pacemaker sends strong, regular electrical signals to your heart and these signals stimulate your heart to beat properly. Modern artificial pacemakers can also respond to your body's needs. For example, they can stimulate the heart to beat faster during exercise. And modern artificial pacemakers will only work if the natural rhythm of the heart goes wrong. So they're there as a backup if your heart rhythm um, develops some irregularities. People with artificial pacemakers will require regular medical checkups for the rest of their lives. However, this is balanced against the quality of their life and the life expectancy increasing massively. So having an artificial pacemaker is often the best choice for the patient. If everything's gone wrong and the heart fails completely, a person may receive a transplant where a donor heart or even a heart and lungs are placed in the body. As with all organ transplants, there is a risk of rejection. So the recipient must take immunosuppressant drugs for the rest of their lives. To reduce the risk of rejection, a close tissue match between the donor and the recipient is needed. This means many people must wait a long time before they can receive a transplant. Often, a person will die before they receive a transplant due to the length of time they must wait. So instead, doctors and surgeons are developing artificial hearts. Artificial hearts are machines that can support your natural heart until it can be replaced. Replacing your heart permanently with a machine is not yet possible. So the artificial heart needs a lot of machinery to work, so most patients must remain in hospital until they can have a heart transplant. But artificial heart technology is improving quickly. However, even with the best current artificial hearts, there's a high risk of the blood clotting, so anti-clotting drugs must be taken by the patient. But by 2015, almost 1,500 people worldwide had been fitted with a completely artificial heart. This is a device where the extra machinery needed can be carried in a backpack. In 2011, Matthew Green became the first person in the UK to receive a completely artificial heart and he lived for two years outside the hospital until he received his transplant. You can see him here in this picture and his quality of life has been vastly improved by being able to move around and live a normal life, albeit carrying the backpack which has all the extra machinery needed for his artificial heart to work. Often this will be uh, including a compressor because the artificial heart technology works by using compressed air to drive the um, contractions and the pumping of the blood in the artificial heart. Artificial hearts can be used to give a diseased heart a rest so that it can recover. Patients have part or whole of the artificial heart implanted and this removes the strain of keeping the blood circulating for a few weeks or even a few months. However, the resources needed to develop an artificial heart and the high cost of each one means that they are not yet widely used. Again, here you can see this is an American called Stan Larkin and he lived for 555 days outside of a hospital carrying around his artificial heart. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below what you've learnt. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you very much for your time.